All right, we're back here in the J Concepts Garage for another video blog episode here. Uh, we've talked uh, on the episode prior about uh, the Southern Nationals and some great success we had traveling out there to West Monroe, Louisiana. I'm here with Paul Wynn. Uh, Paul's been out to that uh, facility before in uh, West Monroe, but we had a great result with Ryan Mayfield taking the, uh, the TQ and the win out there, uh, e-buggy and uh, nitro buggy. He elected not to run the, the Truggy class uh, this time out, but uh, that was his first trip. And uh, Paul, you've been out there before uh, to the uh, Southern Nationals. Uh, what do you think of that facility and, you know, kind of making that trip from Florida out to... Uh, yeah, it's, it's a tough, tough trip. You know, it's probably about a 13 and a half hour drive, uh, but it's well worth it. The facility is amazing. And uh, the track is, is always really top notch. They have a lot of elevation change and um, big jumps and the surface is pretty consistent. It does get bumpy and rough, um, but not as bad as some of the big outdoor tracks. So uh, guys really, really like it. The other amazing thing is it's all AC. Yeah. So you stay cool. They have big exhaust fans. So really good place. So, um, you know, what we talked about, you know, Ryan made his first trip out there. I mean, the, I believe we, we mentioned that. I think our first trip there was 2010. So uh, it, it, the race has been going on a long time now. A lot of these indoor events are, are almost creeping up on a 10th annual. So, uh, you know, it started, uh, you know, many years ago, and there wasn't many of these events. And, you know, now there's a lot on the East Coast uh, where they come in and build these tracks and, and events uh, pretty much out of nothing. Uh, they take an open building, uh, in this case in, uh, you know, West Monroe, it's an air-conditioned facility, but they, they pretty much start with a, uh, you know, a blank page, and they, they build these tracks and events out of nothing. So, I mean, it's pretty impressive that, uh, you know, over the years, and you know, we're kind of coming up on, you know, almost 10 years uh, yeah. doing these, these kind of events. And it's it's become something that people look forward to now, right? Yeah, I mean it's a it's a guaranteed race, um, so people travel from all over the place, and it seems like they draw a lot from the Texas group as well. So um, it's kind of nice you get the Texas guys and and the East Coast guys get together and do battle, and uh, it makes for a, a really fun race too. It's um, you know it's it's only three days, I believe, mm -hmm. so it's not too drawn out, and and uh, yeah, it's super competitive. So, you know, like we said, uh, Ryan's first trip out there, you know, I think he didn't really know what to expect. He's been to a lot of these events before. You know, he's won at the AMS in Alabama. He's won at the Psycho Nitro. Uh, now he's he's come over here to the Southern Nationals. And, you know, he's probably one of the, um, one of the guys that has really made the trip uh, to all these kind of events, right? Yeah. He's, uh, yeah, we've um, brought him over to a couple of these events and, you know, it's, it's really tough with his schedule, but he uh, he makes time, and, and I think he has a lot of fun at these events because he um, gets to meet a lot of new people and interact with the uh, the customers and, and racers a little more than, say, like a Nationals or, or a DNC type event. Yeah, and, you know, so uh, going back to Ryan's cars here, I mean, it's obviously it's a tough, uh, it's a tough race because, and it's also good for the, these guys because the way the conditions run is when you get there, the track's super smooth, they're always like, everyone's like, man, this is an easy layout, and, you know, I got this down, and then pretty soon it starts to get bumpy, uh, the the wetness of the track goes away, it gets dry, and now all of a sudden it's a whole different, uh, it's a whole different animal, right? Right. Yeah, and it, like you said, it starts out really smooth and easy, but um, the track's really big. I don't think people realize how big it is, and the cars are going so fast, so as it gets bumpy, it dries out, the track gets really difficult, and that's something that Mayfield, you know, he mentioned in his interview that he's like the the bumps are really sharp and you're going really fast so it takes a lot of car setup and, and tire prep yeah i think over the weekend he he ran just about everything that we brought there uh you know i think one thing is it's it's easy to try different things at an event like this for ryan and um it's also a learning experience because as the track changes throughout the weekend he really uh i think uh, it, it improves his his program really because it allows him to experiment with the setup and the tires but you know he started with the the teasers tire uh you know he hasn't ran that uh, a lot uh, so far since it's been out but this was a great event for him to try the the teasers he tried them first on the e-buggy where he he ran really well with them and then as the track kind of matured got drier bumpier he started going back to things that he's real comfortable with like the reflex mm -hmm. and uh you know and that's when he uh, started using those later in the rounds but 
Uh, and then towards the mains, uh, he noticed that, and uh, you know, as we were watching the races, the track is wearing tires uh, more than it, it, you know, than it did earlier. So he's like, man, we might have to go to like a detox here. And uh, he ended up eventually went to the detox on both vehicles uh, for the mains. And um, you know, the detox is it's always been a good tire for us. Typically, we run it in the harder compounds, mm -hmm. you know, like R2 and blue. And, and but but Ryan went all the way to greens uh, on both of these vehicles, and and um, you know, I think he had a really good performance uh, in the e buggy. He started off a little bit uh, rough in the first main. He didn't get a good first main he he got third in that main but uh, luckily he had two more mains where he was able to finish mm -hmm. off a, a, a first in both but uh, it's tough because there's some guys that get a little more track time at these events you start off and they might race truggy they might be in the b main or something mm -hmm. like that bumping up like darren bloomfield who came over from the uk uh he was um, he didn't finish two runs of qualifying so he was in the b he had to bump up and he had about 20 minutes on the track and and uh, early on and it really helped him with the conditions right sure yeah i mean that's uh you know for someone like ryan who was tq uh he just had to sit around and and wait you know as the track matured and got more bumpy and the groove seemed to pick up but yet there was still dust so he needed a car a little easier to drive and those guys got to experience that with either the b main or some of them most of them i think ran truggy as well so they got a you know kind of a head start so it took took ryan a little bit but you know, after one battery pack, he was right back in it. Yeah, he got there and uh, was able to finish off the last two mains uh, in the e-buggy to take the win there. And then in Nitro, he had a great race going. Uh, he got out to about a 15-second lead. Uh, he had an issue because, um, you know, he had to make a, a you know, last-minute change in the pits uh, with a tire, and uh, he lost all of his lead. And we were down there in the pits uh, with him, helping him pit, and... Uh, uh, it was some kind of tense moments uh, getting him back out there and he got back in the lead and, and finished off the race uh, so it was it was actually probably in the end it's nice to be in those situations with other good drivers because um, at the end of the day for for these guys it's also practice right? sure yeah so um, finishing off the southern Nats uh, was a great win uh, for us in both classes Cole Ogden also ran really well in the Truggy class I mean, he's he's been really um, running hard this year against Lutz and Born Horse, which has been his main competition here sure. on the East Coast. And uh, he, he almost had that Truggy win, but Lutz kind of came up uh, through the field and, and got him there in the end. Yeah, I think Joe and, and Cole were kind of battling and forgot about Lutz a little bit, and he, uh, he snuck through for the win. Yeah, he got in there. I uh, got a rough start, but he, he caught up with those guys battling and was able to take the win, and, and Cole got second, which was good, and he was pretty happy with his driving, mm -hmm. I think, in that main. Um, you know, moving on, we... We, uh, we have the opposite end of the <laughs> spectrum here. Uh, we go from the dirty 1.8 scale buggies to our clean on-road cars. Uh, recently, we released some on-road bodies. We started with the F1, the Javelin for the Formula 1, uh, which, you know, they look great. The cars are always so um, attractive by their looks. Sure. Uh, we moved into uh, looking at the, the LMP, which is uh, uh, we got some motivation from LRP in Germany. They have a class over there where they race these cars. They have 80 events plus uh, for their series over there where they offer uh, LMP racing. So we wanted to get into that uh, body and uh, they actually use that on the series. And then finally we got the, the A1 touring car body which you were uh, uh, fortunate enough to get out there and do some running uh, first time in a long time right. on the series. and. Uh, Going out to the F Sierra stuff, um, what'd you notice being out there uh, from a long time or a long absence? And you know, how did you enjoy it? Uh, it was it was a lot of fun. You know, obviously I, I did that a long time ago, and but to st still see a lot of the same faces was really nice. Got to catch up with a lot of people, and you know, some new faces as well because they have uh, you know quite a few different classes now. When I was doing it, it was just basically touring car in kind of the heyday, and and now it's a uh, you know, working through various classes like, um, you know, Formula One's one of the new classes, the World GT cars, which they've made a switch over to rubber tires. So now the F1 car and the World GT cars share a similar platform, which is really nice. Okay. And then uh, Touring Car, of course, they have the, you know, the, the stock classes, the 21.5s, the 17.5s, and then the, uh, the mod class, which the mod was, this is the first time they've run mod in a couple of years, which was a lot of fun. 
So it was nice to kind of get in there. I mean, obviously you've pretty much always raced modified, a uh, little bit of 19 turn here and there back in the, the brush motor days. But, uh, you know, getting out there and running mod, I mean, it was nice to have. I mean, you had about two heats, right? Yeah, we had two full heats. And, um, you know, brushless was just kind of coming in when I quit racing on-road. And, um, you know, it was a lot of work to run on-road in the past. And, and now with the brushless and, and LiPo batteries, the, where they're at now, it's it makes it a lot easier. Uh, of course, the cars still take a lot of setup, but the um, overall enjoyment was, was there for sure. Yeah, I mean, it was nice. Like like you said, um, I, I saw people. It was a great atmosphere there at the track. Mm -hmm. uh, the way, you know, the where this track was, uh, it was kind of like an airplane hangar. <laughs> yeah, it's at a small private airport. Yeah, and it, it's, uh, it had a nice kind of atmosphere to the, to the race, and the track was, uh, you know, it was very legitimate. Uh, touring car track i mean they had the nationals there what a year ago yeah last year they had the nationals there where uh ryan cavallari you know won and rick Howard was tq and finished second so um you know i had something to base off of to get started again but yeah it was super nice facility so you know out there racing you know we started with this the a1 body we used your paint job obviously looks good in the press releases and the photos but um you know it kind of allowed you to jump back in and um you know you could go back through the, the mounting of the bodies, the weights of the bodies, and all the things that matter in touring car. And, you know, what did you notice kind of prepping this this car up and getting ready to run? And, you know, what are some of the things that, that you see going down the road? Yeah, you know, I still have a lot of interest in watching the, the touring car series, especially the European series. They uh, they do a really good job, and, and Thomas gets to go over there and do a few of those races. So, um, you know, the emphasis is, is really on weight and um steering and just you know aerodynamics of the body and before you just kind of ran bodies because they look cool but now it's it's really important that uh the body performs well um is lightweight uh you know is is tunable so um that's kind of what we worked on with this so you know we wanted to have a body that was a little bit more aggressive and then you could tune around that. So that was kind of our goal um, for our first honored body. Yeah. And, you know, it's, you know, people ask us all the time why, you know, we haven't really got into this yet. Uh, you know, I guess that sometimes some of the questions people, they pose like, oh, finally you guys have this body or, mm -hmm. you know, I never thought I would see this. But, you know, it, it's nice to, uh, to get out there. And now, like you said, with the addition of these other classes, it's not just about touring car. You know, like you said, there's these other classes. It's... Uh, it gives sort of a, a kick to the on-road scene, you know, having the different bodies and chassis. Sure. Yeah, I mean, it's the off-road scene really kicked up a few years ago with the the uh, short course class that brought in a lot of new racers, and, and I think on-road was kind of missing that. Mm -hmm. And um, now, you know, with the F1 cars and our new LMP car, uh, which is just based on the F1 chassis, so it's just a small conversion kit, and you put a, our body on there. Um, those cars, I mean, it's it's amazing the amount of people that were just in love with that thing and yeah. you know it, it looked like something that they see on tv all the time so mm -hmm. um i think that would be a, a great stepping class for for people in on route yeah because you you know sometimes you get into this stuff because of the the, the connection to the real vehicles and mm -hmm. that they it's something that you wish you could race but now you know you can kind of afford to get into an rc vehicle mm -hmm. So being an F1 or LMP, and then you go into the touring, which, you know, for whatever reason, uh, touring has kind of been the most popular. The cars are, are changed quite often, mm -hmm. but something that remains uh, is the bodies, right? They're, sure. always, they're, they're always the same kind of width. The cars meet the certain uh, dimensions uh, with the sanctioning bodies. So the bodies, in size, relatively speaking, they're, they're interchangeable with sure. the other cars. Mm -hmm. So, like, going back to the A1, like you said, we wanted to do some tuning. Uh, we have two options for the rear wing, uh, the one with, a you know, a tiny gurney, and then we have the, the regular type wing. But those come in the package with our decals. We got two thicknesses. We got the standard and the lightweight. Um, what would you recommend in terms of uh, starting with the, the material thicknesses and the weight of the body? Uh, the more experienced racers will go straight with the lightweight. Uh, that's going to be, you know, beneficial on high bite tracks or carpet tracks and the asphalt tracks. One thing I actually learned this past weekend was sometimes a lighter body isn't always best. Mm 
Mm -hmm. you can run a heavier body which actually helps with traction mm -hmm. so i was running a lightweight body and um, i felt like i could actually probably have went with the heavier you know standard body and that would have produced a little bit more traction been a little more durable mm -hmm. and um, you know it, it it's pretty amazing just the difference in thicknesses it changes the, the car's attitude in corners so you know kind of looking over the 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 car and the class itself do you kind of um see doing more other races with the guys and maybe trying to do the the series this year yeah i had a had a lot of fun um you know i had to rethink a lot of things because in off-road mostly i run mostly two-wheel drive and the way that things work like caster and wheelbase and it, it actually reacts differently so uh, i had to rely on some friends that you know get me back into the on-road mode but yeah i think we'll we'll do some more racing and more tuning and and um you know go from there i mean for your first event back you had a pretty good result you guys had a nice battle there's some guys that were broke out early that were uh kind of the series favorites right now um but you still had a good race with uh with some guys and some friends right yeah it was um you know dave vera who is actually running the series this year this is his first year uh being the, the president and, and running the series as well as racing competitively and um you know, Bobby Horan was out there, Corey Parsons, Dave Franklin. I mean, these are all guys I raced with in, you know, the 90s and, mm -hmm. and uh, the early 2000s. So um, to race competitive with them was a lot of fun, and you know, definitely want to do it again. Um, Dave Vera and uh, I think was TQ until the last round, and then Austin Wolf, who's a local fast guy who just came out of the stock ranks and now run a mod, he TQ. Dave was second. I qualified fifth, um, which I was pretty happy with. And then in the mains, there was um, a big pileup in the first turn. And uh, the old guys, Dave Franklin and myself, we got out clean. And we just ran a, a really you know, competitive race and stayed really close. And we actually both had our fastest lap time. So we were, we were on pace. Yeah. And uh, Corey Parsons, he, you know, he came, came in the last corner, got underneath him, and we had drag race to the finish line. And we both finished doing wheelies and you know, went across photo finish. And so I ended up third and, and Corey got second. You know, what's nice is, I mean, considering, I mean, when I was out there, you know, I got to drive the, uh, the LMP a little bit, but, um, you know, there was some beating and banging with the bodies, but, you know, considering you're doing a wheelie across the finish and everything else, the, the, this thing held up pretty well. Yeah, it did well. Um, you know, that obviously I hit some things during the, the, the qualifiers and, you know, beating and banging with some other cars and, which you don't really get to do that much in off-road, so that was kind of, you know, kind of fun. And, uh, yeah, it held up well. So uh, going back to the, the LMP, um, you know, I drove it a little bit out there. Thomas drove a little bit. You, you ran a little bit, and uh, people ask, you know, we got these conversion parts to convert the associated to the LMP, but you know, what was your impression of driving that car? And, um, you know, obviously they're, they're tuned down. It's a 25.5 sure. motor. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're running a 5.0 in this, right. and a 25.5 in that, so we can't really compare speed. Mm -hmm. But in terms of the uh, how it worked, what did you think? Yeah, it drove really nice. It was, um, you know, it's more of an, an entry-level vehicle. Mm -hmm. And, you know, after driving the F1 cars, you know, they kind of hop and skip around the track a little bit. They mm -hmm. look nice, but... Um, with this body on the same vehicle, it handled much better. Had a little bit better steering. It was a little smoother, um, you know. And, and you can put the car wherever you want, pretty much, because you know it is a little slower. <clears throat> and um, I think if you got a bunch of them out there, you know, it would be just an amazing uh, racing and you know close battles. All right. Well, um, you know, look for that the LMP, the conversion kit that we'll have um, very shortly. For the F6, I mean, obviously, guys already are putting that body on the Formula mm -hmm. One chassis. It's not just the Associated, the X-Ray, the Yokomo, these other cars. They figure out a way to do it themselves. That's how the guys do it on the LR, uh, LRP series. Mm -hmm. And uh, but we will have this conversion kit also. That if you just sort of want, you know, it all done for you, sure. we'll have that. Um, any events for you that are coming up that uh, uh, that might be of noteworthy? Um, I think our next. Uh, event will be the super cup in mm -hmm. savannah georgia um i don't think i've raced there since the 90s um they were home of many national championships there i probably had my biggest breakout race there in off-road so um that's going to be good to get back and, and race with those guys up there to uh you know phil hurd and and uh you know they, they've done a lot for the racing yeah and you know uh, before that i'll be uh, with Thomas and Damon, we're going to be up at the Fall Indoor Nationals in uh, Massachusetts at uh, RC Excitement, 
And then in between uh, that and the Super Cup, we'll be in Vegas for the IOCC, which is Scotty Ernst's first annual uh, carpet off-road race. Yeah, that's gonna be uh, that's gonna be really cool. Um, I don't think people realize what you get when you go there, and mm -hmm. you know they they get a little sticker shock, but when you show up, it's it's just an amazing event. It's uh, you know every every moment is uh, you know exciting, and you know you're meeting new people, and it's it's a really cool event. We'll look for that. Uh, look for us on Facebook, uh, Instagram, on YouTube. Uh, we'll be covering those events. And uh, thanks, Paul, for joining us, uh, debuting the A1 body, getting out there on the on-road track. And uh, congrats to Mayfield, Cole Ogden, and all the J Concepts guys that had such a good weekend at the Southern Nationals. And uh, thanks for joining us, and we'll uh, see you next time here on the uh, J Concepts blog.